Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, people in general seem to be obsessed with personal wellness, health and exercise. In fact, one might say that we have been as obsessed with the idea of perfect diet for a lifetime. Most diets tend to focus on the loss of weight and not the nutritional aspect, which is really a vital part in any diet. Kath Day, who is amazing, she's a dietitian. She joins us now in studio to give us key information to the world of nutrition as our bodies develop. Kath, welcome to the show. Thanks, Jean. I mean, is there such a thing as a good diet? Because I'm still looking for it. I've been on every single one of them <laughs> and I can't get it perfect. So, you know, for me, it's really not about a diet as such. Yeah. Um, I think that's the first way we need to really change our way of thinking because what it's actually about is if you, if you do want to become more healthy and perhaps lose a little bit of weight, it's about adopting a lifestyle that you can, you know, consistently um, yeah. uh, practice healthy habits and about looking at your sleep and your stress levels because that's how we keep the weight off. Yeah. And then, you know, obviously the other thing is just making sure that you don't eat too little because that's what diets kind of signify. Is that a thing? Can you eat too little? Yes. You know, I find it so um, something that so many women do um, yeah. because kind of like media tells us to eat a lot less, create this big energy gap. And a lot of people kind of exercise a lot and then they'll eat very small amounts and, and then not lose the weight and wonder, you know, what's happening. Yeah, I've done that before. And I thought it was called like a calorie deficit thing because I thought if you only eat a certain amount and you burn a certain amount of calories, then that should say that you should be in a calorie deficit and then you'd lose the weight. Why doesn't that work? So unfortunately, it's not as easy as just, you know, kind of tracking it on your watch and minusing that whole equation as you've just kind of said. You know, not all calories are equal. And yeah. um, it's, you know, as I said, in women, often they'll follow like a 1,200 calorie diet or if you're looking at it in kilojoules, 4,200 kilojoules, and they'll um, not lose weight because often it's about the dieting cycle. Okay. Um, so the more you follow a low calorie diet, it may initially work, but the longer you do so, your metabolism actually slows down from eating too little food. And that can change um, the way in which your metabolism responds, you know, later on in life as well. Yeah. So with a slow metabolism comes slower weight loss. With slower weight loss comes that that hopelessness and that frustration. Yeah. Um, and then that obviously just makes the whole sort of scenario more negative. Then um, one often ends up binge eating or emotionally eating. Yeah. And then, you know, you never really learn how to eat for, for lifestyle and, f and for you. You're just exactly. kind of always following this new diet craze that's coming along. And is it a thing that when you get older, it just gets harder? It definitely does get harder um, when you get older. You tend to move a lot less um, and you know so there are certain changes in your body as well you know a woman we have changes in estrogen mm. and all sorts of things so it does get harder but it's not um, impossible and yeah. often when women get older they again eat a whole lot less and then it's that slowing of metabolism down so then it's about making sure that you're doing things that kind of rev your metabolism up yeah, how do you speed up your metabolism before we go to social media? Is it possible? <laughs> yeah, so, you know, revving up your metabolism, exercise is a very important part. Yeah. But again, it's about giving your body enough to eat so that you don't go into that starvation mode where yeah. your body kind of holds on to everything okay. instead of learning how to burn nutrients. Oh, I love this. Let's eat, guys. So now we asked you on our socials if you've got any questions for Kath. So Zanele said, uh, I don't eat veggies since I was really young and now I'm in my early 40s. Am I healthy? Mm. Ooh. Yeah, thank you for that question, Zanele. <laughs> you know, dietitians and anyone who's interested in nutrition, the one thing we'll always say is vegetables, vegetables, vegetables. Yeah. Half of our plate actually needs to be vegetables. Uh, and the biggest thing that one must also realize is salads like lettuce, tomato, and cucumber is what I call bunny food. Really, oh, no, don't they tell me that. need to be on the side. You need to eat a half a plate of vegetables. Being so, lettuce broccoli. And, and carrots and, uh, and lettuce and cucumber don't count. They water. Okay. No, <laughs> you need to eat the beautiful coloured ones. Those are the ones with the real nutrients in okay. them. You know, magnesium, potassium. And the greener, the better. The greener, the better. You know, okay. the purples are also great. The dark <laughs> reds. Yeah. Our next comment comes from Samukiliswe. Um, Lala on Facebook who asked, I sometimes skip breakfast and eat orange or apples. Is it healthy? Thank you. 
So that's a, a very common thing as well. Thank you, Salise, where it's, you know, we always tend to just grab something. And yeah. what's very important is that you break your fasting period because you kind of, you sleep all night, but your yeah. body's still working. Yeah. So you need to break that fast and you need to actually eat more calories in the beginning of the day okay. and lower it, you know, as you slow down at night. Um, so eating an apple, is like a snack for me. I think I'd want to eat my whole arm. Off, yeah. You know? And so if you starve throughout the day, then you can overeat later. Exactly. Eventually. And a carrot never yeah. looks great if no. you're starving. When does anyone ever no, choose a carrot? But a thing? carrot dipped into a bit of hummus is oh, always a good idea. <laughs> that's a great idea, yes. You are amazing. I wish we had longer time with you. I want you back on the show to discuss intermittent fasting, but I'm guessing you're going to say is a no no. <laughs> After the break, yoga instructor Pranya Naidu shows us some basic yoga positions to improve our menstrual health and alleviate menstrual cramps. Plus, we make a hearty cheese and cauliflower soup with Chef Kerry Kilpin. Can I eat the soup? Oh, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.